Please call these I'm people not scared out. Of... Listen, the whole world's looking at you. So call call them out. out. What's please. up? It's the Jamal the Hitman Charlo. Let's get it. <laughs> who won it? <laughs> Name them names, man. They know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The <laughs> names need to be <laughs> they named. Know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monsters. <laughs> But that shit was hilarious. Mike went over that shit. He said, "What up?" He said, "He said, he said, this Jamal the Hitman Charlo. Who want it?" <laughs> now I know I'm gonna be called all types of coons, Uncle Tom's, sellout, sambo's. I know I'll be called all that. I give two fucks about what you call me today. <clears throat> Not your friend, not your homie. I don't want to be down, and I give two fucks about you. <clears throat> you don't like it? Get the hell on and unsubscribe. We don't need you over here. Bye, Felicia. We don't need you. I don't beg for subscribers. We only want the fans who love the sport of boxing more than they love an individual fighter. If you're so in love with a fighter that you can't keep it real, we don't want your bitch ass over here anyways. We're going to use this as a teaching point because Mike said some real shit in there. Mike said some real shit in that interview about when Jamal Tullo asked him, he said, what's the difference between your era and this era? He said, in my era, everybody believed that they can beat everybody. Everybody fought each other. Everybody believed that I can beat everybody. That's the difference. They fought like, they fought like a motherfucker. Everybody wanted to fight everybody. You know what I mean? This era right here, this nigga, what they're talking about, well, you know, it's all about marketing now, Mike, and, you know, you got to understand marketing and advertising, and you don't understand about Facebook ads, and you don't understand how Google ad works work now and stuff. You know, I'm just uh, being facetious, adding all that other stuff, but I'm like, what the fuck is this nigga talking about? Mike asked him to look into the cameras. He said, look into the cameras. Look into the cameras, and you got you got millions, millions of people watching you right now. Millions. Look into them and call them out. Tell them who you want to fight. Please call these I'm not people scared. out. Listen, the whole world's looking at you. So call call them out. out. What's please. up? It's the Jamal the Hitman Charlo. Let's get it. Who want it? <laughs> <laughs> them names, man. They know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The <laughs> names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monsters. <laughs> But that shit was hilarious. Mike went over that shit. He said, "What up?" He said, "He said, he said, this Jamal the Hitman Charlo. Who want it?" <laughs> now, Big Charlo said David Benavidez's value is low, and he's not worth as much for him to fight him. This is what the nigga said. When he said that, that's when he lost me right there. Well, you know, I'll fight David Benavidez, but you know, his worth is low. His value is low. He brings nothing to the table. He ain't got no, he ain't got no, um, no titles or nothing. Okay, but who the hell the white boy you probably be fighting in June on June team? What the hell he bringing to the table? What the hell did Juan Montiel bring to the table? So David Benavidez don't bring nothing to the table. He ain't got no belt, none of that. But Juan Montiel brought a whole lot of shit to the table, huh? Nigga, please. Miss me with that bullshit. Paul Pierce say, I think, he said, I think he the best. And Mike Tyson said, I think he the best too. But I need him to do what? Prove it. How do you prove it? You don't prove it fighting Suzuki's. You don't prove it fighting Juan Montiel's. You don't prove it by being in a fucking weight division for five years and had no, and had zero unification matches. Mike say I need for him to prove it. Now, if you a nigga, if you a, if you a, a fanboy uh, from from Houston, Texas, if you a fanboy from Houston, Texas, or the state of Texas, and you and you a fanboy Jamal Charlo, in your eyes, he proved it already. Yeah, what he said, Mike Tyson say different mentality. He say, no, nah, that's my boy. Are you gonna let him starve? No, nah, nigga, we gonna fight and get this money. This is what I was saying. What Jamal Charlo should have been doing with Daniel Jacobs and 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 um and uh Demetrius Andrade. When you had the opportunity to fight those guys, you could have been doing that instead of chasing this one goddamn dude from Mexico. The dude from Mexico ain't thinking about you, boy. So since he ain't thinking about you, you should have been making your own legacy fights by fighting your brothers and y'all coming together and making money together. But them, but them dick riding PBC YouTube channels, they was giving you niggas a way out. You don't get no more way outs today. Not with me. I give a fuck about you. Again, I don't have, I give two fucks about what a nigga think about me. And, and another thing, I don't have no emotional attachment to this nigga. 
I don't have no emotional attachment to Crawford, Spence, Joshua, Fury, um, Usyk, Tank Davis, uh, Shakur Stevenson, uh, Devin Haney. I don't have an emotional attachment to no fighter. So I give two fucks about who your favorite fighter is. Them dudes back then had a different mentality than these motherfuckers that's, that, that's on boxing today. These dudes today, not all of them, but some of them, some of these dudes that's fighting today, they got a whole nother different mentality. And y'all got the nerve to be comparing, these fanboys be comparing these fighters today to the old school fighters. Nigga how? Nigga what and nigga where? Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go.